push notifications because you used to work for Slack. And out of all the companies in the world, yep. I suspect Slack know more than anybody <laughs> else about push notifications. And I've been to some of your great talks as well. Uh, as Amsterdam last year, in fact, where you're speaking about push. Um, so just summarize for us, how important do you think push messages are for developers? I think push notifications are incredibly important um, for one of the reasons is they do allow you an opportunity to re-engage um, your users. And I think, you know, if someone hasn't visited your app in a long time, potentially a push notification is what reminds them that they even download your app in the first place, right? Or takes them back into your app. The other side of it, besides the engagement part, is it allows you to disseminate important information to your users, right? Without them having to go into your app. Mm. Um, and it potentially could allow them to take actions, right, on things um, outside of the app. So without having the burden of opening the app, clicking into stuff, they can potentially do and still interact with your app um, with a push notification. And and so I think those two are are the great things about push notification, the engagement um, aspect and also getting that import, important information to your user and allowing to them to interact with that information without having to go into your app. Certainly the latter one is critically important for apps that are based around communication, like Slack, like Twitter, like yeah. you know anything like that, anywhere where this has happened right now. The, the news, for example, makes sense. But the re-engagement thing, I think, is dramatically undervalued by our community. And yeah. when you see it done well, like an app such as Duolingo, they're saying, hey, come back, hey, come back, hey, come back. <laughs> yeah. and it does end by saying, listen, it's been five days now. You aren't coming back. I'm just going to stop talking to you. They don't, they don't keep on harassing you. Yeah. But it does give that little nudge. Hey, this thing you wanted is still awesome. It's still great. It's still, or it's, back, it's ready now what you asked for. It's now here. So getting folks back into your app with push or even local notifications is just so important. Yeah. Exactly. That re-engagement is really important. And I think what you said is key, done well, because there are definitely apps <laughs> that don't do it well, right? Um, would you, would you name you know, any, Kaya? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But if I get a huge you know, marketing blast that has nothing to do with you know, anything I've interacted with in the app or anything that I'm interested in, um, it, it's not useful. And, and that can actually lead pe people to delete your app. So I think it's also important to be very careful about the type of notifications you send, right? Because if, if you send out a, a large blast to, to all your users that's not necessarily related or individualized to them, they may say, oh, what is this app? I, no, delete, you know? And I've done that personally with apps. Um, and so it's important to be very thoughtful about what type of notifications you're sending. So obviously the App Store rules did just change a week ago, two weeks ago, saying that now yeah. you can use adverts as long as Do the marketing. user can say, yeah. I don't want these things. So it's an opt-in, opt-out relationship, which is huge because it was already happening, right? As you said, it was happening no matter what. People are saying, yep. you know, Netflix like hits me with push quite a lot, saying there's this new show that you're going to love. And of course, I never actually watch it, but the marketing to me. Yep. <laughs> so it's happening anyway. But now they're saying, okay, we give up trying to enforce this, but at least make sure you have that user opt-in first, which is huge. Yeah, it is huge. I, I, I appreciate them acknowledging that this was something that was already happening. And they obviously weren't enforcing the, the guidelines as strictly when it came to notifications. But that user opt-in, I think, is incredibly important. Like having you know, granular notification settings. I, I, I say this a lot, you know, in my talks and things about notifications, but allowing your user to have the power to control what types of notifications they're receiving is really important. So if you're sending a bunch of notifications, but then, you know, I go, I can go into the app and I don't have any notification settings or ability to, to edit them or change them. Um, it, you're, you're really, I think, losing that trust that you have with your user, right? And, and providing them the setting allows them to still receive the notifications, just the ones or types that to that they want to. So you can still have that engagement piece, but then it's personalized and they have the, the power to set their own preferences. So it sounds like it's a major tip there, folks, that if you're gonna do push, give folks the chance to say what kind of push interests them, to, to customize, to filter. And in some respects, yeah. yes, it means they're gonna get fewer messages, but they're going to care more about those messages. These are the more. ones that are tailored to me personally, the things I care about. 
and it might be adverts. Yes, tell me about great sales in my area for hotels. Yeah. It's an advert, but it's something I personally care about. Obviously, not having much right now, but things that I personally act yep. at once on is still an advert, but I, I want it. I want that kind of thing. Tell me now before it gets snapped up by somebody else. So tailoring is, is huge. Exactly. Yeah. A hundred percent. And exactly what you said. It's like, if you're able to tailor, people will care more about the notifications. It's, that caring aspect is important and will actually help with that engagement. Because if, if folks are not engaging, like you can track right engagement for your notifications. If they're pushing, if they're, if they're clicking on your notification or interacting with it at all, you'll get that call back in your app, right? right? And so you may have like an analytic event or something that you're tracking there. But if, if you notice that there's not any engagement with your notifications, figure out why, right? Maybe you need to have more granular or specific settings and allow people to, to really show what they're interested in and have notifications around that. Because otherwise, they might not care about the notifications. They may turn off notifications completely for your app. So it's an interesting thing, uh, listeners, is that obviously Kaya is very, very good at push. And so she drops things in there that she's like, yeah, I'll just do this thing. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is a really good idea. So let's just backtrack slightly <laughs> there. You just dropped in an absolute yeah. nugget of gold there. When the push goes out to someone's screen and they interact with it, as it you know, launches your app, something happens with your push. If you have analytics, if you're tracking that, track that being used it'll tell you this message was sent to 50,000 and 300 opened it. That's a very, very low open rate. So you can start to yep. think which messages worked well, which ones worked less well. And it takes what, two lines of code to do. I mean, it's, it's easy, right? Exactly. So exactly, exactly. It's not, it's not a huge lift uh, for you as a developer, but it'll give you immense value. Yeah. So what do you think makes for a, a, a push message? notification that makes folks really want to go for it. Not also, hopefully not the uh, the one weird trick from a doctor in your area <laughs> kind of thing, but what makes for a really good uh, interactable push? An interactable push. So um, I think, think about, you know, the simple interactions that you may have on your app. I think it depends on what, what type of app you have, right? But we can, for example, use an app, let's say like Instagram or something. And so that's a post-based app, right? Someone makes a post. And let's say you have notifications on for someone's particular Instagram account. Mm. So you click on that notification and you can see the picture. The number one interaction, right? You want to be able to like that picture. You can do it in the app, of course. You can go into the app and, and click like. But you got the notification, so why not, why not click like there? You may want to comment real quick, right? Great photo. You could do that from the notification. Again, you can do it in the app, but why stop what you're doing, go into the app? Maybe you're already in another app doing something. You can still interact with the notification without having to go into the app. So think about the small, simple interactions that only take you know a couple of seconds that happen in your app that you can potentially bring into a notification. And you can easily do that with like like or comment. Don't over overload the interactions uh, of a notification. I usually think three is a good amount, um, and then four max. I don't think you should have more than four interactions on a notification. Um, but definitely think about what are some really quick things that people can do. My favorite notifications, personally, are from um, single sign-on apps like Duo or Okta, where you sign in and they send you a push. And then you verify that right from the push notification, um, just clicking yes or no, right? I love those single sign-on uh, verification apps because it's super simple, super easy. I don't have to go into their app. Um, I might be already doing something. I just want to sign in. So that's a really good example of some really useful interactions. Yeah, and again, just stacks of brilliant ideas in what you're saying. So it sounds really much like, yes, of course, we want folks to launch our apps. We want people to go to our apps and spend time in our app. But the main thing, the main benchmark for us should be, is someone actually interacting with our app somehow. And if that is yeah. likely to be improved by having those interactions inside the push message, as opposed to in the app, then put in the extra legwork, make that happen, make those push actions exposed with comment boxes or like, or whatever you said, because it means they're more likely to reply immediately. And that's the big thing here, right? 
Yeah, and that's the big thing. It's still engagement. I think, you know, of course, like you said, as app developers, we want people in our app and want them using our app. But don't view them interacting with a push notification or doing actions as a push as not engaging because it is engaging, right? They took the time to, to click on the notification, see what it is, see what actions are there, and then still continue. They, they didn't have to open the notification, right? They could have just deleted the notification. So it did show that they, they care. They have some engagement there. Um, and then there's other ways you can pull them into the app. Um, and there may be something more important, like, for example, a messaging app, if it's a really long message, they probably are going to go into the app to continue and have that conversation. But when you have those short, quick interactions that someone can easily just do from the notification, you're allowing the user you know, you're, you're trusting them their time, right? You're not taking their time away. Because if, if I'm busy doing something in one app and I get a notification, and I, I oftentimes, because I've worked on notifications for so long, I will, you know, force touch into a notification. And if I don't see any actions and I'm like, great, now I have to stop what I'm doing, going into <laughs> the app versus, <laughs> versus if there was a nice quick notification action, I'm like, great, you know, I'll, I can handle this later, but I just want to do a quick reply or something like that. And so you're you're really trusting the user with the time. And if they do engage with their notifications, most likely they're also going to go to your app and engage with it there. Right.